Right, what we hear from the other side now is that they want organic change. What we're saying on the government side is we're not in any way opposed to organic change. We're not against changing laws within countries when it comes to these minority groups. But we're generally saying that there's a rather slow change that we've seen so far. And that we believe that we should at least provide legal protection when we see that discrimination is right and that it's happening. And we do believe that we can say that it is actually happening in many EU countries today towards minorities like Roma and generally towards women when it comes to the rights of sexual prevention and freedom in that sense. So we do say it's a real problem and we do say that we need to speed up the process which lawmaking will do. How does lawmaking do that? Well laws generally shape the way we think. We do agree to that. But signaling from the state that there's certain behaviour that we do not find acceptable, that you cannot engage in, and if you do so, we will prosecute you. So in the case that you bring up about South African gays being discriminated, we generally think, yes, it's sad that they are discriminated, but we do still think that they're better off when there's a legal system protecting them. And we generally believe that the individuals belonging to these minorities, it's a very powerful message to at least recognise that your situation, your choices, the way you live life, is is absolutely legitimate and we do not like, have any clashes against it. So we do think there are certain values and we do acknowledge that it takes time, but it's not in any way mutually exclusive to the organic change that you also suggest. So what we also heard is that EU is a beacon of freedom and human rights and it already is. Well, we generally say to some degree it is, but we can't just talk about it, we generally have to live it to make it credible. Because as Pau points out in his first point, that having these rules or not having these rules affects the credibility of the EU as a soft power in the world. EU today is one of the strongest diplomatic powers, at least growing strongest diplomatic powers, and negotiated many of the biggest clashes and conflicts around the world. And they were generally also been the largest donor of humanitarian and development aid. We do say there is a lack of credibility in one of the most prominent EU efforts that they are promoting in uh, making the world more developed and stable, where you do not even adhere to these norms in your own backyard, where you do not even provide the rights for certain minorities and groups back home. What credibility do you have when you go abroad and try to promote these values? We generally say, saying that you're a beacon of freedom and hope, freedom and hope, uh, humanity is not a good thing to just say. You generally have to do it to have credibility. But anyway, what also here from the other states is why states uphold discrimination. So in their sense, it's sort of simply, they just don't like these people, that's why they don't do it, therefore we should enforce them because they'd be anti-EU, that's the response we get. But then they say, people in general are not fundamentally against this. We don't believe that backlash will be as strong as they say. People might have certain prejudice and ignorance to certain issues because they haven't been exposed to it in a sense. So we do not think that having a law that would protect certain groups, we don't think the majority of humans in the EU are so fundamentally opposed to the Roma community that having a law protecting them would in any way provide extreme, extreme backlashes. We do realize that for some people it's a principled issue. They might, for example, be religious. <laughs> And we'd say the freedom of religion is an important principle, but sometimes you can't have principles and value them for just being a principle if they're attached to extreme harm and outcome from them. When we're limiting women's rights, for example, to abortion, we do think that there's a substantial harm attached to it. I'll take your opinion. Okay, so one of the main lines of anti-EU rhetoric is that they're helping other people, they're not helping you. Your money is going to other people. We think that when the EU comes along and people are able to say the EU is forcing the government to take care of the Roma and not unite hard working people, that's extremely powerful and extremely pernicious. We don't really see how not being allowed to discriminate Roma would like hurt the average population and take away resources from them in that sense. Having a law that protects their basic minority rights is not in any way mutually exclusive to providing general services within the EU. But what we do say is, does this translate into change of norms by doing these legal things? We say it may be good, not immediately perhaps, but in the long term we believe it's more credible. It would take time, as we said, and it's not mutually exclusive. But as we have said, it is a signal from the state that we don't differentiate between citizens within the country or between different countries. That if you would have a right within one EU country, that right should be expanded to another one. Because if the general idea of EU is to cooperate and create a common market and etc., 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 
We do generally believe that if you do have this non-rights for certain minorities, they cannot fully enjoy the freedoms of what the EU provides. You don't really have true choice of where you want to settle or where you want to move. When your basic rights as a human being are not even acknowledged in certain settings, when you cannot even marriage in half of the country, we do not really think that you're allowed to enjoy the true benefits of the EU. And therefore we generally think if this is the principle that the EU is promoted, they should ensure that all of them can enjoy the the freedoms or the benefits of doing so. So generally, why is it particularly important for the EU to affect these particular areas or these particular policies? We generally say, who is the victim of hate crime or minority ish different issues? We say that they're groups that are minorities or generally historically oppressed groups. They've generally been structurally oppressed to the degree that even if the oppression is real and tangible, they cannot affect change within these countries. In some countries like Romania, for example, the prejudice and oppression of what being Roma is is so extensive and it's so wide out that this small minority cannot by itself change the structures within the country. They would need somebody that comes externally and makes sure that they can provide these basic rights for the nation. And we generally believe why the states should do this. Because the benefits of doing it for these individuals are so, so great. Because it's not just about being able to marry or not marry, it's about having fundamental rights in that sense. Being able to choose your partner is such an inherent part of you being able to live a full life. Being able to get education as a Roma is such an extensive and important basic need for you as a citizen. And we believe the benefits for these people are particularly, particularly great and tangible. But the harms by doing this are extremely, extremely small. As Pat pointed out, what's the worst thing that can happen? That some people would be out we do not really see that as an extreme, extreme harm in that sense. And even if people are outraged, we don't really, really believe that the minority being outraged should be allowed to dictate how a minority that's been structurally oppressed should be allowed to live their life. So even if they are, we don't really see that that would be important. What we did hear from the opening team is that people be outraged, that people feel that this is entirely wrong. We generally believe that we have the acquis commune already within these states, where we are courting new states, and we're already demanding that they accept basic norms of basic human rights. We were just expanding these norms and the principle of acceptance of certain ideas that already exist. And when it comes to them saying populists are going to blame the EU for what's happening, maybe populists are going to blame the EU for what's happening in any system if we just want an easy scapegoat to blame. So just in this sense, we'd say it's a different way of the EU doing this. They extend certain rights to the countries that are taking part, and for all the citizens of these countries to truly be able to join the benefits that the EU provide, they do have to ensure that the minorities that are heavily affected and cannot work for this change within the system should at least get it. Therefore, we're very happy to propose. Thank you.